Digital Foundry is proudly sponsored by the Logitech G935 headset. After a pitch perfect of a remarkably well choreographed introduction for Xbox One X way back in 2016, hopes were high that Microsoft could repeat the trick for the crucial reveal of Project Scarlet at the recent E3. New details were indeed unveiled, major claims were made, but Microsoft muddied the waters somewhat with messaging that still leaves us unclear about what the new box is actually about, how powerful it is, and what the vision is that separates it from Sony's upcoming PlayStation 5. Now let's confirm what is definitely on the table. Spec points that with one exception are pretty much point for point the same as Sony's prior announcement. For starters, both boxes use AMD's new Zen 2 CPU core. The basis of the Ryzen 3000 products arriving for PC users next month. Meanwhile, Microsoft also revealed that AMD's next-gen RDNA-powered Navi technology delivers the graphics muscle for Scala, just as it does for the next PlayStation. The platform holder also announced ray tracing support for its new machine, a feature that's also found in PlayStation 5, though Sony has not been quite so open about whether this feature is hardware accelerated or not. Then there's the SSD, another hardware point that Sony revealed first with Microsoft following suit. Now, Sony has said that its solid state technology is proprietary, and my understanding is that Scarlet's is also similarly bespoke with low level access and terrific performance. Just don't go into this expecting standard M2 slots on the motherboard for upgradable storage. Beating PC performance in a console is going to require a tightly integrated custom design. There's a reason why both Microsoft and Sony are pushing storage so hard. It's a genuinely game-changing addition that will see the surrounding hardware pushed in all sorts of new directions. Low-level integration may also mitigate the need for a typical ATX next-gen increase in RAM for the new console. So imagine this, the storage itself effectively becomes a secondary, relatively vast pool of memory, albeit somewhat slower than a GDDR6. Another aspect that ties together both platform holders' next-gen announcements is a lack of information on the graphics core. For reasons I'll go into shortly, don't expect to see too much in the way of information on teraflops emerging from the platform holders. The uh, metric is swiftly becoming meaningless owing to radical revisions in the new AMD Navi architecture. And even before that, Xbox One X has frequently delivered resolution advantages over PlayStation 4 Pro up to a factor of 2.25x outstripping its mere 43% compute advantage. Bottom line, there's much, much more to performance and pixel pushing than teraflops. So before I break down the Scarlet reveal in more depth, here are some curious factoids in Microsoft's reveal that do need some clarification. And uh, I'm not sure I can actually provide that, but still, Scarlet was defined as the biggest generational leap in console technology that the firm has delivered. But I do find it hard to see the computational leap from the OG Xbox to the Xbox 360 being bettered. Meanwhile, the 16 times increase in RAM allocation seen moving from Xbox 360 to Xbox One is highly unlikely to be surpassed this time around, unless you factor in the SSD, of course. Then there's the notion of Scarlet delivering a four times leap in processing performance over Xbox One X. On the CPU side, this does seem likely, but the idea of the machine delivering an equivalent of 24 teraflops of GPU compute seems overly optimistic. Now, based on our own information, along with teasing reveals within the Scarlet announcement trailer, here are my thoughts on the setup of the new box. Well, one of these boxes at least, Curiously, Microsoft is using very strange PR speak to avoid the question of the leaked lower-end Scarlet Box, codenamed Lockhart. Another interesting aspect of the E3 showing is that while the Xbox One X reveal effectively told us the RAM allocation, the SoC size, teraflop count, and even the nature of the cooler, Microsoft is being a lot more coy this time around, and there may even be some red herrings in the assets 
that it's showing this time around. So let's begin with the CPU setup. AMD Zen 2 technology has been confirmed for both Scarlett and PS5, but not a whole lot more has been shared. What we do know is that Sony has confirmed eight cores. This is a design foundation for the architecture, and by extension, it's likely that Microsoft will follow suit. The efficiency of the core has seen fundamental improvements from its first gen revision, but comparisons with the desktop PC versions seen so far, well, they can only go so far. It's unlikely that we'll get for 35 megabytes of L3 cache, for example. The use of AMD's new scalable chiplet architecture, where groups of eight cores can be clustered together for 16 or even 32 cores, also seems unlikely for a console box. Our understanding from sources is that Microsoft is also turning its hand to a fair amount of custom CPU tweaks for Scarlett. I guess the move from Jaguar to Zen 2 delivers an actual generational leap, one which Microsoft seem intent on exploiting to its fullest extent. There's talk of 120 FPS gaming, which would certainly soak up the CPU cycles, but on the flip side, it also doubles the graphics requirement one of the areas where we should expect the next-gen consoles to fall short of a traditional console's generational jump. CPU-wise, there is one further takeaway. Rumors had discussed separate CPU and GPU, but Microsoft showed an integrated system on chip. Meanwhile, in a press briefing I attended the day before the Microsoft Scarlet reveal, AMD CEO Lisa Su confirmed that PlayStation 5 is also using an SoC. So the idea of discrete CPU and GPU components in the new consoles, which has been mooted as a possibility by some, well, I'd say that's now extremely unlikely. So let's talk GPU and confirmation of a customized graphics core based on the Navi architecture. Microsoft marketed Xbox One X hard based on its six teraflop GPU with Peak Compute also used to differentiate the enhanced consoles from their 2013 base equivalents, but a new metric will be needed this time around, if the platform holders are looking to sum up performance in a single number. Which I don't think is possible, to be honest. Anyway, the GPU's potency in terms of gaming performance can't be measured by its peak compute output in a world where the new Navi-based 9.75 teraflop RX 57 XT is, according to AMD, 14% more capable than the 13.7 teraflop RX Vega 64. And remember, Vega itself is a significantly different beast to the earlier GCN architectures on which the current gen consoles are based. There's a big investment in more transistors here. Navi takes the existing GCN compute unit and morphs it into the dual compute unit, doubling up on ALU power within each block while reducing latency and boosting cache. AMD is talking about a 25% increase in IPC for Navi, which is equivalent to the boost delivered by a notional 80 compute units compared to 64. There is room to scale up further too, and AMD is expected to deliver a bigger, more powerful Navi GPU next year, all of which is to say, once compute figures do emerge for the consoles, don't be surprised if they're lower than you might imagine. But rest assured that Sony and Microsoft can still deliver great boxes. Returning to Silicon area, the new Navi GPUs from AMD for the PC space deliver a total of 40 compute units requiring a remarkable 10.3 billion transistors. The nearest last-gen PC equivalent is the 36 compute unit Polaris chip used in the RX 570, 580 and 590 with a total of 5.7 billion transistors. And going back to the first-gen GCN used in the original PS4 and Xbox One, 32 compute units on the original Tahiti cards required 4.3 billion transistors. So clearly, Navi's compute units are significantly more complex and more capable than prior GCN offerings. So again, any kind of teraflop measurement can't really be equated with the last-gen consoles. Next up, memory and confirmation of GDDR6 RAM. Microsoft's trailer presents the new SoC surrounded by G6 memory, specifically 14 gigabit per second modules fabricated by Samsung. Beyond that, it's difficult to draw too many conclusions, as there does seem to be some very odd properties in the memory setup. 
while the 2016 Xbox One X reveal actually gave away most of the technical makeup of the console, Microsoft has been a lot more shy this time around with obscured test motherboard shots, an Xbox One X motherboard fake out and lavish use of depth of field photography to blow out a lot of the interesting details on this all important SOC shot. However, drawing upon a 4K feed we captured directly at the Microsoft conference, two of the G6 modules come into focus enough for us to catch their part numbers, ending in 325BC HC14 and 325BM HC14. And these are firmly established Samsung part numbers we can just look up on the internet. The HC14 confirms 14 gigabits per second speed, but the two part numbers suggest a mixture of both one gigabyte and two gigabyte memory modules. Whether this is just Microsoft seeking to throw off people like me, or indeed Sony looking for clues on the makeup of the system remains to be seen. But this is certainly a strange setup. I mean, who knows? Maybe we're looking at two 128-bit buses addressing eight gigabytes and four gigabytes respectively kind of bizarre. Now the angles are strange, but the evidence also seems to suggest that eight modules are in place on the board which would seem to rule out a 384-bit memory bus. I say seem because, well, you know, we just don't see the entire area there. However, in between the chosen angle, the amount of blurred out detail and the close-up viewpoint, Microsoft may well be choosing to play its cards closer to its chest this time around. There's further oddness in that the SOC shot we have lacks any kind of surface mounted capacitors. So I'm not sure if it would actually work, but we do get some idea of the size of the processor thanks to some cunning ballpark guesstimates from Beyond 3D's Pro Elite, with estimates ranging from 365 to around 380 square millimeters, almost certainly based on the seven nanometer production process. So where does this leave us in terms of gauging the potential power of the new hardware? The new 7 nanometer Navi GPU from AMD clocks in at 251 square millimeters for 40 of its new compute units, while educated guesses on the size of the 8 core Zen 2 CPU cluster come in at 70 to 80. Historically, console SOCs have clocked in starting at 320 square millimeters. So simply adding the two components, as is the CPU and GPU, and accommodating interconnectivity fabric and custom ray tracing silicon already gives us a console sized processor at the lower end of the scale, similar in size to PS4 Pros. Realistically, we'd be looking at 40 CUs there with 36 active. At the upper end of the scale with a Scala SOC at a ballpark 380 square millimeters, a 48 CU graphics core with 44 active seems viable. In both cases, clock speeds will prove vital. The AMD Gonzalo processor leaked with a mooted 1.8 GHz GPU, but to what extent that is actually viable remains unknown. The PC-based Navi RX 5700 XT has a sustained gain clock of 1755 MHz, but a peak clock of 1905. Short of delivering a big box with a high-end cooler, which is not beyond the realms of possibility, consoles might have some effort matching that. Bottom line though, at the lower end, if a new console emerged with power equivalent to Vega 56 or Vega 64, that would still be a pretty awesome next-gen box. If we hit 5700 XT levels or higher and we have ray tracing support, it's gonna be incredible. But there's still a ton we don't know. How the SSD works, what that means for expandable storage, how fast the components run, how they are called and how big the boxes are going to be. I mean, they're actual physical form factors. So plenty of questions remain, but we do have some answers at least, and maybe more will emerge at Gamescom or elsewhere. But that's all from me for now. Please like and subscribe to support our work. Ring the bell for instant notifications. And yes, please do consider supporting work like this on the DF Patreon. It's a huge help in a world of ever declining YouTube revenues. Anyway, that's all from me for now. Thanks for watching. Featuring 2.4 GHz wireless, 50mm Pro-G audio drivers, and DTS Headphone X 2.0 surround sound technology under the hood, the G935 headset delivers the ultimate 
wireless audio solution for gamers, whether you're playing on PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, or mobile. Order yours today from Logitech G.